quarterback's special pat note. We'll go ahead and open it right up for questions for Coach Kelly if you want to start. I guess kind of how quickly do you see the guys adjust to the speed of the starting practice now that everyone you have back is yeah, well, it's a little different, right? That first day, it doesn't matter how much running you do in the summer, and you know, Lou's got him in great shape. But it's you know, the speed is different, you know. And the cool thing for us is that we have a great understanding of what we're doing. So guys are flying around. There's really no apprehension. Guys are moving around at a fast pace. The practices are so much crisper, you know, on both sides of the ball. Um, you know, guys are competing. Guys are moving at a high speed. You know, guys are tagging off, no big collisions. You know, it looks like what it should look like. You know, guys are have a really good understanding of where they're going. So, you know, they're, they're not thinking, they're moving around really well. So the, the, the speed of practice has been a lot different than it has been, you know, in the last couple of years. Rod? You, you have some new pieces in place on the offensive line and maybe perhaps uh, players moving from one well, we're always going to try to cross train guys, you know, because it's out for a long season. You want to always <clears throat> be able to play your best, you know, five, six, seven guys. So, you know, guys will cross train. They'll play tackle and guard. Some guys are moving it out from the inside that are more inside guys. Uh, we're cross training a couple guys to be centers and guards. Um, Jordan Williams has moved around. Um, and playing some right tackle and some left guard. You know, you just got to try to build as much depth as you can. Nick Penley did the same thing, went, you know, from guard to guard to tackle. Um, but that, that group has had a really, really good offseason, and uh, they do a great job of, of being together, uh, watching tape, um, you know, taking Brent's direction. But there's such a, you know, the majority of those guys are older guys, so they don't need a whole lot of, direction. They, they understand what it's going to take for them to be really good as a unit. When you see one of them, you see five of them, you know, and that's the cool thing with the offensive line. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, you just a little bit of interchangeable parts. But, um, you know, as we get moving more into camp, we'll settle on, you know, a, a five across the board. And then that's where we'll go probably the second half of the practices. Okay. Well, I mean, there, there's so many components to that. I mean, that's where we want to be, 65 66%. I think historically we've kind of been in that area. Um, there's a lot of pieces that go to it. One is what's the play call, right? And is there a little outlet throw off of a run? Can you throw a bubble? You know, can you throw a little hitch? Can you move it around? The, you know, can you screen it? Can you just dump the ball um, and have called plays where you're not spinning the ball down the field and it's more of an add-on to a run where if they just drop, you're going to throw a hitch or, you know, a little stick route or whatever. So a piece of that is the play calling. You know, if you're just calling four verts every play, uh, your percentages are going to be in, in the high 60s. So that's a piece of it on me to be able to mix in enough of the RPOs, enough of the nakeds, the bubbles, and then just some quick game uh, to be able to help them with that. Um, they have to make on-target throws, right? If you, have an, if you have a dude that's wide open, and you just sail a ball, that's on you, right? Your, your, your percentage is gonna be low. Um, gotta do a great job of protecting, picking up the blitz. Did a great job today, they came off the edge, I think it was the first play of team. They came off the edge, we had a little rollover. Uh, did a great job picking it up, um, and we washed, the, we washed the blitz right by, Jeff stepped up and threw the rollover. Now that's only a five yard catch, you know, but it turns into a 15 yard gain because we caught them in a blitz, they were, you know, and we beat the we beat the coverage. So a lot of that is 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 all tied together. And then, you know, the last piece of it always when you throw the ball is the catch, right? So we got to do a great job of framing the ball, catching it, and then once we catch it, you know, make something happen. So even if we throw a little smoke screen or you know a little bubble, you know, those could turn into 20, 30 yard gains because you slip one guy. And, you know, it's just an add-on to the run. So if they're always overloading the run, uh, we have to be able to dump the ball on the edges to our guys. We have really good athletes on the edge. And that's how your percentage goes up, you know. So it's a combination of all of those guys, the throws, the catches, and the protection. Kelly? You added Trad to your room, obviously. Long relationship there was your first few weeks. Yeah. What does he bring to the table? What made you decide to 
maturity, knowledge of the system, um, very, very good leader. Um, I think he's still got something to prove uh, because, you know, he was he started a few games, played really well in a couple games uh, and then got banged up and then kind of was out of the mix there. Um, I think he's still got a lot left in his tank. Um, and he's just a veteran guy, you know, he's he's a serious guy. He's he's um, he's not a big laughing, joking kind of guy, but he brings it in a, in a, a very like likable way, you know, and it's very just matter of fact, hey, we got to do this. We got to do this. And even when he's in the meetings with the younger guys, I mean, you know, he, he's in his fifth year, you know, so now all of a sudden it's like, OK, I get it. You know, you know we should be doing this so he can add layers to the meeting room that the younger guys, you know, can't necessarily add because they haven't seen it all, you know, and e even like in the middle of the, in the middle of a, a film session, whether whatever, he'll turn to the guys and say, hey, you know, we got to see that safety coming off the edge a little bit more, that, that type of thing. Um, so he brings that leadership, that veteran guy, number one. Number two, he's a hell of a player. You know what I mean? He's 6'5", he's and he can spin the crap out of the ball. And, you know, if you give him time in the pocket, with his understanding of what we do, um, he could just flat out sit back there and throw it, which gives us a little bit different element than you know the other guys that are you know a little bit more dual threat. Um, you know we're not going to run a whole lot of zone read with him. You know now he could run very fast in a straight line, but he turns like an oil tanker. You know what I mean? So we don't want him. We don't want him running the power read. Uh, but as far as being able to spray the ball around, know where to go with the ball, get guys lined up, have a command presence, I think, you know, that was a good add to the room. Rob? Do you feel you have the right combination now with the offensive line and the running back group to establish the running game, which will open things up for, for Jeff as the game goes on? I do. I do. I, you know, when you have two, two running backs that are preseason, uh, you know, picks, you know, in, in the doke, I mean, it's, you know, those guys are good players, and we have really good depth behind them. We're big up front. Um, we can lay on people. We're, we're strong. Um, you know, we're over 300 across the board. Some of those guys are, you know, close to the 330, 340. So you can bully people around a little bit more, you know. And it's always going to come down to, like we've talked about since I've been here, you have to be able to establish the run. You, gotta, you have to be able to give the ball to the back on rundowns when the defense knows you're going to run the ball and you got to be able to hammer the ball. And then off of that comes the RPO. They want to get an extra guy involved. Now you're throwing glances or hitches or rolls or bubbles and things like that. And we've been able to establish the run, you know, pretty, pretty consistently, you know, even as we were developing this thing. Um, and, you know, I, I like the group as a whole, you know, and there's got to be a mentality to running the ball. Right? There's got to be a mentality that I don't care how many guys they put on the line, right? we're going to come off the ball, we're going to double team people, we're going to be bullies, we're going to knock them off the ball, the running backs are going to pound the ball downhill, and then you get your RPOs and you play action off of that. You know? And so um, I think that that's the mentality. You know, we, ran a, you know, we, we ran a lot of uh, inside the tackle plays today, uh, which was our first you know, day in shoulder pads. And, um, you know, we had some good runs. And honestly, the good thing is that, you know, the defensive line and the linebackers are stout, you know. So it's, it's, uh, it's a different group in there. Now, there's some big cats in there on the other side of the ball, too. So you have to go in there and muscle these guys out of the way. And, you know, that will definitely be something that we continue to build on, you know, as we get through this week. So I, I think the biggest thing with him is he knows where to go with the ball, right? So he's, he's done a tremendous job in the offseason of understanding the offense. But when he has that, that go ball on the outside, right, he's got to be able to let that guy go make a play. You know, and that's what we're consistently working on is, I mean, he has a hose. He can throw the ball 65 yards, you know what I mean? But it's not about throwing it 65 yards. It's about throwing it 25 and dropping it on somebody. You know, or if the corner's over the top of them, you know, taking a little bit off and back shouldering it, right? I mean, that's the hardest throw in football to defend for, with the, for the corners is that goal ball on the back shoulder where they're turned and looking at the receiver. They have no idea that the ball's even in the air, and now you're giving 
the receivers an opportunity. We got some big cats on the outside. You know, you gotta, you don't have to be perfect. You know, you don't have to be perfect. You just got to give them a ball where they could go compete. And if they're going strong with their with their elbows up over their ears and they're trying to high point the ball, and the DBs grab a hold of them, then we'll you know we'll get the interference call there, too. But you just can't sail the ball out of bounds and not give them a chance. And even if they stack them and the defender bangs into them, they're saying it's an uncatchable ball. So we just got to continue to refine you know the deeper ball with the, just the drop in mechanics. And that's something that uh, we might have to go back to the old garbage can toss. You know what I mean? Just get the garbage cans in the end zone and just drop the ball in there, as, as basic as that is, to just touch the ball in there a little bit, just take a little bit off. Rod, you, you batted the kicker to the offense. Does that change the play calling now, knowing that you have somebody there to put it through the, the uprights rather than having to go for it on the fourth down? Yeah, I think it does. I think your mentality on offense has to be that you have to score the ball. Like, don't leave it up to anybody else, right? So our, our mentality during the game is, even if, it, even if the defense is playing great in the game, don't take your foot off the pedal, right? Just keep, your, keep the foot down, all gas, right? And take care of it yourself, right? Don't leave it up to anybody else. Finish drives, right? Which was one of the things that, that you know, stubbed us in the foot last year is we'd get down in there, and then we, we wouldn't finish the drive, and then we'd have to rely on you know kicking a field goal. Um, the bonus part of it is that, yeah, you don't have to get it to the 20, right? Now, if you get it to the 35, even the 40, you have a shot, right? So you know we were in a two-minute drill today, and we were you know we kicked a couple of bombs, and they came up just short, but they were 55-yard field goal. You know, so if you could get it in there and say, hey, let's just get 10 more yards, those kicks would have been in the bleachers. So it is, it, it does take a lot off of you as a play caller to know, all right, in this situation, we just have to get it to this point. You know, we just have to get it here to give ourselves a realistic shot. And like you say, we can, we can take the shot, you know, for a touchdown, knowing that we're already in field position, right? Let's take a shot. And if we miss it, we'll come out and take the three. I was curious about the receiver position. How are you looking for someone A, plus Jalen, but really more production, I think, overall from that position? I don't know what you see in there and how's that competition? Yeah, I mean, it's a deep group. You know, it's a deep group. The older guys, you know, uh, Dono and, and Malachi have been, have been really good the first three practices, but there's a lot of younger kids that are really pushing them. Kyrick, has really come in and done a really nice job in the slot, really solid play, veteran dude, understanding of what we're doing. Um, you know, but the, the their job, right, is twofold. Get open, right, beat the dude one-on-one, -on -one, and when the ball's in the air, make a play, right? They can't do that if we don't do a great job first protecting, and then second, the quarterback giving them a catchable ball. Right? So they may stack the kid and run by him. And we talk about production. They may stack a kid and run by him. If we don't make a great throw or the protection breaks down and the Q's got to scramble, they've done their job. You know? So the biggest thing that we're going to concentrate on here over the next couple weeks is when the ball is in the air, who's coming down with the ball? And then we're charting that every day for every receiver, every throw for the quarterbacks. And then ultimately, we get up there against Northern Illinois, it's going to be, listen, this dude has done it over and over and over again, either in his career or in camp. So if it's 50-50 and you can throw it on either side, who am I going to throw the ball to? Right? If I'm a quarterback, right, I'm throwing the ball to the dude that I know is going to give me the best opportunity to make a play. So that's just a continued refinement there. But the great thing there is that you have a lot of guys pushing for playing time. Okay, go ahead and we'll wrap up with Coach so we can get the players on. Well, if you if you if you at, if you go into Shard's office, he's watching Alva Kamara every day, every hour, like you know, and then he's coming and say, "Hey, Pete, this kid's our Kamara. He's our Kamara," you know. So, you know, he has those type of skills. The great thing with him is he's if you see him, you know, with no shirt on, he's bulked up. 
You know, he's got traps and he's got a chest and he's got triceps and he got muscles that he never thought he had muscles. Right. So we're not afraid to roll him inside the tackles at all, you know, because he's learning how to run with his pads down and pound the ball. But, you know, the, 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 he bounced one today. We ran a power inside and they kind of gapped us off and he just bounced it, went down the sideline for like 20 yards. So he has that ability to be an inside out runner. And, you know, obviously he's a real threat in the pass game. You know, and when you talk about, if you go back to your question before, if you talk about um, pass completions and passing percentage, I mean, that's an easy way, right? You get the ball down to the back, right? And it might be your third read. You might just say, hey, he's open. I'm throwing it to him. And, you know, you look like you're a quarterback genius because you dump the ball off to the back and he runs 30 yards. And it's like, oh, what a great read. You know, and the quarterback is just like, no, that's that kid's a dude. I'm giving him the ball, you know, so. You know, he does give us the flexibility to be able to do a lot of things. And he's a, the, the last part of that with him is that he's a really, really smart player. So you can move him around in different positions and, and different spots on the field and motion him out of the backfield, motion him into the backfield. Um, and he's, he's got it. You know, you just tell him, hey, we're going to do this on this play. And he understands football. You know, so that's the, that's the fun thing with him about having a piece that you can move around a lot. We'll go ahead. Wrap up with Coach. Coach, thank you. Thanks, Jess. Jeff, go ahead and start. Yeah, Coach was talking about one thing you really want to see is your touch on the balls and deep balls. Kind of talk about what goes into the workout on that and kind of how you feel like it progressing. Um, really just stand out there and putting in the work and dedication to get that right with, with, the, with my receivers. And um, just knowing that you have to put in the work to get things like that right because stuff like that don't just come easy. And it takes a lot of work, so really just staying out to practice, working on it, watching film on it. Um, one person I watch for the deep ball is Russell Wilson because he puts nice touch on his passes. So just seeing how he throws it deep uh, with arc on the ball and just going out there and working it. Rob? Three practices in, have you noticed a difference in the approach to the way practices conducted this year as opposed to last year? Uh, yeah, I, I noticed for myself, I like to see – like I'm, I'm looking for a more perfect look from the offense. So like, um, instead of last year focusing on, like my development and things, I'm now this year focusing on the whole offense as a whole, and just making sure that we look unique. Like we look unique, um, put together, make sure we're executing. And um, whenever we don't execute, it kind of drives me nuts. So <laughs> just looking at that as more of a, a offensive thing and making sure that we the best we can be. Okay. Um, definitely the deep ball, um, no matter if it's back shoulder or over the top. Uh, sometimes when I throw it over the top, I tend to throw it a little too flat. So it makes me, um, cause me to overthrow the receiver, but that's just something that I'll work on after practice and just continue to get better at. And then the back shoulder, sometimes I'll find myself getting too wide and releasing the ball a little wide. So I don't really give my wide receivers a chance to catch the ball. So just working on that and getting better at that. Yeah, more towards the sideline. Well, we've got a couple of uh, freshman slot receivers, a couple of freshman wideouts. What are you seeing from that? And do you think uh, they could be able to push some of the other guys right away and get playing time? Uh, yeah, I like I like the freshmen that came in. They work hard. They study they study the playbook. They read, look like they're ready to um, just go in there and compete. You know, they're learning. And um, they just hard workers, and they just always ready to learn, always asking questions, and um, they just give it their all. How much more prepared do you feel right now with having a new offseason and having more time to get your feet wet and get Yeah, I definitely feel a lot more comfortable. Um, I definitely approach the game in, in, in a different way. You know, um, I feel like it's a great thing for me just taking it one day at a time and getting better each day, stacking days. And um, just going out there knowing that I, I just got to go through my reads and just slow the game down in my head and stay calm. Do you feel the, the speed of it slowing down as you process the Yeah, most definitely. I definitely feel the speed of it slowing down and just, just it's really just processing it faster than slowing it down. But um yeah I definitely feel more comfortable out there. Still in the 
with the athletic ability, there's a lot you can do. How does that process of thing work? How do you kind of refer from student yourself or sitting out as a game plan? Like how, how is that process going on for you? Um, it's really just mixing it in with my gameplay, you know. Um, I know there's things that I can do outside the playbook, but I kind of want to follow the playbook and go out there and execute the offense. But if something breaks down or I need to make a play with my abilities, I, I'll do it. Uh, yeah, I definitely see confidence in Jameer Grow. Um, he definitely learned a lot over the offseason, just been working hard. He's gotten bigger, and um, it, it's really helpful because he, he can run up like in between gaps now, and it's just it's dangerous, you know. I just want our offense to be one of the most explosive offenses in college football. Um, just going out there and execute and putting up points. All right, anything else for Jeff? All right, let's start with the phone here from Kelly. So can you kind of just run through how you ended up in Georgia Yeah, it was a crazy situation, honestly. Um, played at Temple for Coach Collins, was recruited in his first recruiting class there, um, and then graduated uh, this past May. Um, had the opportunity to come here to Atlanta um, and to join this program and took advantage of the opportunity. So, Rob, what has the process been like learning the offense? Is the terminology different or is it pretty much what you're used to? So it's very similar uh, to what we were running at Temple. Um, it was weird for me, though, because you, know, you learn an offense, coaches leave, new staff comes in, so you kind of have to forget something uh, for two years. So to come back and have to relearn, or I guess, you know, uh, get back into an offense that I learned three years ago. Uh, but just a big point of emphasis for me this summer was getting back in the playbook and relearning kind of what I'd learned a couple years back and um, just have things come back to memory. Okay. How would you compare to the environment of the uh, I would say uh, with Coach Collins, very similar. Um, Coach has a very distinct way that he runs his program. Um, and so for me, to have the opportunity to come here and be a part of it again. Um, I knew what it looked like before, and honestly, coming back here, it looks the exact same. Um, just in terms of uh, the way things are run um, from top to bottom, um, player-led program, um, a lot of the sayings we have are very similar sayings that we had with Coach Temple, so uh, very similar in terms of that. How much do you think you kind of knocked the rest off of in terms of understanding I would definitely say it was a learning curve um, for me for being out of football for about six months um, and then obviously having to come back and learn the offense again. Um, this whole summer, that was just a big point of emphasis. Uh, fortunate enough for me, I didn't have classes this summer, um, so I was just in here every day trying to um, learn the playbook, get back into things, um, getting with these new guys, uh, new receivers out on the field, and, and just trying to get a feel for kind of what I was getting myself into. Okay. Yeah, um, so just a decision that my family and I had made after the season last year. Um, obviously knew I was nearing graduation and just felt um, from a health standpoint that it was better. Um, upon a couple opinions, uh, praying it over with my family, really just felt that when this opportunity came about that um, it was something that I should take. Um, and so obviously being away from the game and then having the opportunity to come back, uh, it's really unique. A lot of times you don't, you know, football tells you when, when to stop, not the other way around. Um, so to, be, to really be back here, is, it's a blessing for me. What are you seeing from the offensive weapons that are available to the quarterback? Group? Oh, I mean, there, there's a lo loads of talent all over the field. Um, from an offensive line standpoint, there's a lot of veteran leadership up there. Um, that we've seen, I've seen that a lot this summer. Um, a stable of running backs, um, you know, tr truly great guys in there, and then a lot of weapons on the outside as well. Um, so a lot of older receivers, um, even some younger guys have, have shown some things and done a lot of good things. So I, I think there's a lot of talent on this offense. Go ahead, Yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, I mean, really, my biggest thing, um, and Coach says this a lot, and I, I take it take it hard, is just really adding value to this program, um, and, and that's really all I came here to do, and what I really want to do, um, is just just add value any way I can, uh, whether that's you know in the locker room or on the field, on the sideline, on a headset, um, to just really come in here and, and do the best I can for 
for the guys in this team. Um, I feel like I owe it to them, and just to have this opportunity to be here, it's, it's a blessing for me. Most definitely. Yeah, so I've known Coach P um, and Joe Battaglia for, uh, I guess, since I was in eighth grade. Um, so they started recruiting me when I was in eighth grade down at Coastal Carolina. Um, and then when they went up to Temple University, uh, fortunate enough to have been recruited by them there. Um, and then, you know, really blessed to have the opportunity to be with them here. But yeah, Coach P and I have uh, a really strong relationship. My family knows his family very well. Um, so just through the whole recruiting process, everyone got to know each other very well. I spent a lot of time with Coach and his family um, up in Philly, being a guy who was far away from home. Um, and having someone close like that. So just, you know, a great relationship with him and Joby. So, and honestly, even a lot of these guys on the staff too, um, who were at Temple that I, you know, I had the opportunity to know and interact with. Um, even the defensive coaches, like being down at Temple, I was a scout team quarterback as a redshirt guy. So like Coach Knight and I got to be pretty close, um, you know, whether he was getting on me for, you know, not throwing where he wanted to or whatever on scout team, but. Anything else for Trad? Did you? Oh, Uh, no, I mean, for me, you know, this is the opportunity came presented itself and, and this is where I, I, I kind of felt like was home where I knew I wanted to be. Um, you know, the commitment I made as a high school, a 17 year old out of high school was to coach Collins program. Um, and for me, it was really kind of like a blessing to have the opportunity to come and fulfill that commitment. So uh, I, I'm not sure. I guess that'll be kind of up to the coaches. I, I have the eligibility, um, so, you know, so I'll just be here um, to add value how I can, whether that's two. One, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. So, I am. So I graduated in May, uh, undergrad in international business, and then I'll be pursuing a master's in building construction here. Anything else? Trent, thanks. Buddy. Good deal. Thank y'all. Nice to meet y'all.